We're here at the International Conservative Conference in Tel Aviv, and we're with Ambassador John Ricolta Jr., the former ambassador of the United States to the UAE. Shalom. Shalom, and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Israel's a great country, and um, I'm looking forward to this CPAC event tonight. Great. So, you know, you were the ambassador uh, at the time of the Abraham Accords. So you're here to give us the behind the scenes. How did it really happen? Why suddenly did an Arab state decide to go ahead? And maybe the answer is that it wasn't really suddenly. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. It wasn't sudden. It was a slow roll. Started many years ago, and there are several factors in the region that I think caused both Israel and uh, the UAE to look at their relationship in an entirely different lens. Uh, let's start with the fact that um, peace and prosperity is what every human being on the face of the earth want. We want better jobs, uh, hope for our children, better education, and better medical care, and the list goes on and on. The problem is, is that when you try to get those things through war and violence and uh, conflict, uh, you cause great destruction. I think we can take a look at what's happening at Ukraine today and you ask yourself, how long can that continue? How many decades will it take for uh, Ukraine to get back on its feet? And uh, so peace and prosperity in the 21st century is the only way to go. And both Israel and the UAE, that's what they want for their citizens. Now, from the UAE's perspective, uh, they had regional threats. Uh, they had a changing dynamic in terms of their economy. Uh, oil, while important today, may not be so in 50 years from now. So they're looking for partners. And when they take a look in the region, who would make great partners? There's no better partner than Israel. They despite, have a, despite the historic, um, you know, controversies and disputes between the Jews and the Arabs? Yes, that's true. But was there any real controversy between Israel and the UAE? They never fought a war. They never spilled any blood. They're not arguing about land borders. I think the UAE at one point in time said to themselves, look, when we look around the region for a partner, what do we need? Somebody who can defend themselves, somebody that can help us defend ourselves, somebody we can build a regional economy uh, over. Uh, and our values are the same. We both came from Abraham. Our religions are from Abraham. And so I don't think it was that difficult a lift for the UAE. Rest of the Arab world, it's a different story. Now, was the so-called Palestinian conflict part of the discussions, or they really put that aside? I think that everybody realized that after 25 years of trying two cold, two cold pieces, Egypt and Jordan, uh, and the Palestinians having many, many opportunities to come to the table and make peace, it just wasn't in the cards, and we need to move on. And I think everybody would like to see a Palestinian peace with Israel, but it no longer is the driving force. And this is the big change from the Trump administration to others that they saw this and they said that the peace between Israel and the Arab states no longer goes through Palestine. It can happen without Palestine. Now, I want to make it clear, that doesn't mean that we aren't fighting and wanting to see a Palestinian-Israeli peace, but it's not the central focus any longer. Now, you mentioned that it may be different, and you understand that it's different in other Arab countries. So where's the potential, or what are the challenges to continue with these Abraham Accords, and where do you think it may happen next? Well, I think, number one, we have to show that the Abraham Accords not only were effective, but brought more peace and prosperity to the partners who signed it. So you have Bahrain, you have Morocco, and you have Sudan, and each one of them is a different dynamic. So if we can show progress in each one of those countries, that will make the others stand up and take a, a real look. If you look at just between the UAE and, uh, and uh, Israel, the number of tourists is just phenomenal. Hundreds of thousands of Israelis have already been to the UAE. There's already been cross-investment. Cell phones now work. You can open up bank accounts. Uh, you have embassies in each other uh, country. You don't need to apply for visas, visa upon entry. I mean, all of these things help to build a strong and vibrant economy. And when two countries have the same values, share a common language, which is English, there's no telling how far this can go. Do you feel that the current administration is uh, trying to continue, is acknowledging that Abraham Accords is a very, very positive thing that the uh, Trump administration did? Well. You know, the Biden administration had a little problem in the beginning. Uh, they refused to recognize the words Abraham Accords. Uh, in fact, the um, White House press secretary said about a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, that the Abraham Accords were dead on arrival. 
But I think that the political constituency in the United States, both on the Democratic side and the Republican side, no, 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 we're going to take this and we're going to run. And so I think the administration has slowly warmed up to the idea that this is something that has to be fostered, nurtured, and we have to try to get the next big country in. You were an ambassador, an emissary of the Trump administration. Do you miss the region? Do you hope to come back when, if and when, the Republicans get back into the White House? I do miss the region. Uh, I've fallen in love. Uh, I've always had a great love for Israel. This is my fourth trip here. Uh, and I learned to love the UAE. Uh, it's a very tolerant nation, very benevolent, uh, wants to make friends instead of enemies, uh, will go out of their way to meet you more than halfway. I will point out that they're tough, smart businessmen. You're not going to get a free ride. But I have no doubt that Israel can compete effectively and can build a solid uh, commerce uh, and international relationship with them. And that should be the model of, uh, of how Israel goes forward with the other Arab states. Okay, thank you very much for joining us and enjoy your stay in Israel. Great. Very glad to be here. Thank you.